Good morning. How's my family this morning? My voice is a little bit better today than it was last Sunday, so we'll see if we can get through this. Hey, we need to thank the band. Nick, you need to wing it more often. You did good. That was great. You know, that song is uh, really special to me personally because I'm that man. I uh, remember I hadn't been going to Ellis County Cowboy Church very long. I'd met Buster Bromo and a bunch of good mentors in the church. And Tommy Brandt came along and uh, was at one of our events going on at the church. And I met him. And uh, we had a lot in common getting to know each other. So that weekend, uh, he, he was invited out to Buster's house. And I was invited to go to Buster's house and... Uh, Tommy Brandt took out his guitar, just his guitar, sitting in Buster's living room, just acoustic, and he sang that song. And I'm going to tell you, that song changed my life right there on the spot. It just, you know, it, it, it was a good example of how transform transformation can be made in a person if they really want to change, if they really want to transform into something closer to Christ. But it impacted me in a way that I'll never forget. So anytime I hear that song, you know, it just touches my heart and gets me excited about what God's done in my life and what he's done for me. This morning, I would like to uh, begin by opening our Bibles to look at two pieces of scripture together. The first one's going to be Romans chapter 12, beginning at verse 2. If you join me there first. Once again, I pray you have your Bibles with you. I would like for us to all look at this together. Don't just take my word for it. Let's take God's word for it. Romans chapter 12, beginning at verse 2. And I'm going to say this. Last night, Terry and I uh, went to a restaurant. Uh, I don't remember the name of it. It starts with a P. Some fish place up on 35. How do you say it? Cajun Kitchen, okay. Uh, our granddaughter's birthday uh, party was there. We had never been. And uh, what was unique about this restaurant, it has scripture posted everywhere. It's on the tables. It's on the walls. It's on their shirts. I mean, th this was a remarkable place to see that much scripture placed in a building that big. And it wasn't a little building. It was a big building. But on every uh, table you sat on was wood. And burn into that with scripture in the corner of each table of some kind, which was pretty cool. And um, the scripture that stood out was Romans 12, verse 2. Because below it, and Terry pointed this out, I didn't catch it at first. But it's on the main wall when you go in. The whole scripture's there on the main wall when you go in. And they got all these fish. There's blue, dark blue, light blue, and white fish. And they're swimming. They're all swimming in one direction, which is pretty cool, right? But they had one fish that I missed that she pointed out to me. One fish, and it was red. And it was right in the middle, swimming the other way. Romans chapter 12, verse 2. Let's look at it together. Romans chapter 12, verse 2. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Rather, what they were representing was this fish. He wasn't swimming like all the others. He was doing his thing. Do, not following the world, basically. Great, great visual. You know, transform means to change in composition or structure, to change the outward form or appearance of, or to change in character or condition. And that's what we're talking about more this morning than anything else, is the change of our condition our character, or the condition of our lives. Now let's look at our second piece of scripture, which is 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. Second Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come, the old is gone, the new is here. 
Rather, just like the song said, the old man is dead. Amen? No matter where you were or what you've done in your past, if you have received Jesus Christ into your heart, you have been transformed into a new creation. Amen? You may be thinking here right now, hold on. Well, I still look the same. As that may be true, because it's not about the outside. It's about the inside. It's about the heart and mind that you've got going on, not about the outside. And normally, when our heart changes and our mind changes, if we have some flaws on the outside, we start to address those. Amen? So it's more about what's going on on the inside. God transforms us in a way that leads us to look at life differently. Rather, when we change our heart and our mindset, we start to look at people and things and life entirely different than we did before Christ. We should now see the world around us through the eyes of Christ as we strive to be more like Christ. Amen? Throughout history, God has always blessed his people. And one of the ways he blesses us is through transformation. John D. Rockefeller Sr. was a strong and husky when he was a youth. He early determined to earn money and drove himself to the limit. At age 33, he earned his first million dollars. At age 43, he controlled the biggest company in the world. And at age 53, he was the richest man on earth and the world's only billionaire at the time. Then he developed a sickness called alopecia, where the hair of his head dropped off, his eyelashes and eyebrows disappeared, and he was shrunken like a mummy. His weekly income was $1 million, but he digested only milk and crackers. He was so hated in Pennsylvania that he had to have bodyguards day and night. He could not sleep, stop smiling long since then, and enjoyed Nothing in life. All his money didn't give him any peace at all. The doctors predicted he would not live past another year of life. The newspaper had gleefully written his obituary in advance for the convenience and sudden use. Those sleepless nights set him to thinking. He realized with a new light that he could not take one dime into the next world. Money was not everything to him anymore. God was displeased, he felt, with his sinful life. Then and there, he surrendered his life to Christ, repenting of his sins and pledging for God to change his heart. The next morning, he awoke a new man. He began to help churches with his amassed wealth. The poor and the needy were not overlooked also. He established the Rockefeller Foundation, whose funding of medical research has led to the discovery of penicillin and other wondrous drugs. John D. began to sleep well, eat and enjoy life. You could say he began, began to live a life to its fullest. The doctors had predicted he would not live over age 54. He lived to be 98 years old. Amen. God is able to transform the weak and the wounded into the strong and the resilient. God is able to bring healing and wholeness into all of our lives. And we have many witness to that right here in this church today. Upon God's will, he can transform us in many ways. He can use circumstances and situations. He can use trials and tribulations. He can use victories and blessings. He can use the power of his spirit and the power of his word to transform people. We should never underestimate what God can do in our lives. This week, while I was driving back from East Texas, I was out in East Texas, and I was driving back, and coming down this little countryside road, I was near a couple of lakes. I was close to Lake Athens. And off in the ditch on one side, when I was coming up on 
this area, I thought, man, that looks different. What is that out there? There was a bald eagle sitting in a ditch. And you don't get to see that very often where they're just on the side of the road, especially on the ground in the ditch. But as I approached, the eagle took off. And it had a rat or something in its talons. I don't know what it was. But when it took off, it flew right at me and right over my pickup truck and was gone. Man, that was an amazing moment. Because when we go to Fairfield and other lakes, any of the East Texas lakes especially, just seeing a bald eagle is remarkable, knowing that it's the majestic bird of our country. Just think that could have been a turkey. I'd probably hit it. I'd probably hit it with a car then, right? So, you know, the bold bald eagle is a great example of what transformation can happen. This is the story about the eagle. The eagle has the longest lifespan of its species. It can live up to 70 years. But to reach this age, the eagle must make a hard decision. In its 40th year, its long and flexible talons can no longer grab prey, which serves its food. Its long and sharp beak becomes bent. Its old age and heavy wings, due to their thick feathers, sticks fixed to its chest and makes it very difficult for it to fly. Then the eagle is left with only two options. It can die, or it can go through a painful process of change, which can last up to 150 days. The process requires that the eagle fly to a mountaintop and sit on its nest. There, the eagle knocks its beak against a rock until it plucks it out. Then the eagle will wait for a new beak to grow back, and then it plucks out its talons. When its new talons grow back, the eagle starts plucking its old aged feathers away. And after five months, the eagle takes its famous flight of rebirth and can live for up to 30 more years. Why is transformation needed? Many times in order to survive, we have to start a transformation process. We sometimes need to get rid of old memories. Thank you, Jimmy. Old memories, old habits, and other past traditions. Only freed from the past burdens can we take advantage of the present. Thank you. I'm straining to get this together, you know. I'm, I'm sorry it came so hard. One transformation that stands out to me more than any other that I enjoy in the Bible is the transformation of Saul to Paul. And many of you know the story. Paul on the road to Damascus, he's going there. He's got a letter that he can start arresting Christians. So he's got a purpose, and he's on this road to Damascus. And God strikes him down. Right there and blinds him while he's there. But right there, the transformation starts when he winds up blinded. Many of you know the story. Many of you can read the story. I won't go deep into it, but... Paul not only wrote about transformation after his experience, but he experienced it firsthand. Saul's intent as he traveled down the road to Damascus was different than God's. He had his own plan. God had a different plan. God always takes the initiative in our salvation and our transforma transformation. See, Paul, he thought his plan was what it was all about. God's plan was more powerful than his. So God, God led Paul through a transformation here that changed his life and his perspective. Turn with me to 1 Timothy, verse 1, beginning at 13. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, chapter 1, beginning at verse 13. And right here we're going to find Paul speaking. These are his words. First Timothy, chapter 1, begin at verse 13. Okay. First Timothy, chapter 1, verse 13. Even though I was once a blasphemer and a persecutor and a violent man, I was shown mercy because I acted in ignorance and unbelief. The grace of our Lord was poured out on me abundantly, 
along with the faith and love that are in Christ Jesus. Here's a trustworthy saying that deserves full acceptance. Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, of whom I am the worst. But for that very reason, I was shown mercy so that in me, the worst of sinners, Christ Jesus might display his immense patience as an example for those who would believe in him and receive eternal life. And Paul goes through a transformation. Amen. Right here on the spot. And he doesn't mind sharing it. He doesn't mind telling us. And our transformation occurs when Christ is given the reins, total reins of our lives. When we relinquish, relinquish our will for his will. That's when our transformation occurs. Transformation. Am I saying that right? Not transportation. Transformation is a process for some change comes, for some the change comes instantly. The minute you receive Christ, the minute people are baptized, that change comes instantly. Does it stick? To some it does. Does it hang on? Some it does. But some it takes time. It takes a process. You know, people don't get to where they are many times in a day. It takes years to where they are. And once they accept Christ, some people get it immediately and that change starts. But they're still going to have some rough spots. They're still going to have some bumps, right? Some rust on them. Isn't that a good way the song says? Still got a little rust on them. Well, God's in the process of cleaning that rust up. But it takes time and it is a process. It's a one at a day, one day at a time strive to be more like Christ. That's what we should be striving for each time. And transformation is, a, is that type of a process that we can't rush it. Because sometimes when we rush it, we get it wrong. Let God lead us through that process. Amen? Because inward transformation leads to outward transformation. Right? So whatever is going on the inside will be reflected on the outside. And true transformation leads to Vibrant prayer, a servant's heart, and a spirit-filled life. I can actually say, me personally, since I've learned this and I've allowed God to have control, where Reg never liked, I didn't like letting go of control. I wanted to be in control. But since that's happened, I'm at more peace in my life. I'm more comfortable around the people that I speak with and talk with. And I'm a lot more comfortable when I walk up to them and speak in tongues. Because I believe God's got control. God's leading me to do what I'm doing today. We all need to be in that place where you're at peace with your life. If you're allowing finances or people or family or work or whatever to just destroy your thinking and your, your life every day, stop. Allow God. Give Him the reins of life. Give him control of your life and let him lead. And you say, it doesn't work like that. Yes, it does. Have you ever tried it? I've had people tell me, no, that won't work, but they've never tried it. Right? So how do you know it won't work? And you can't be halfway in. you got to be all the way in. You know, the halfway in is not going to work. And that's the problem that they don't want to try is because they only want to get halfway in. But God didn't want you halfway in. He wants you all the way in. But boy, the peace you find in life, the way you look at life, the way you deal with others changes everything. Sometimes the way we deal with others causes more problems in our lives. But if we learn to use Scripture, if we learn to use God's Word when dealing with other people, the results and the things that happen don't let you get out of your zone and it destroys you and bothers you. They can go where they want. They can act like they want. But don't let it change the way you feel and the way you look at things. Everybody's salvageable. There's nobody that's not. And people think that all the time. But that's not true. And transformation will also lead us to fellowship with other believers. And get us excited about sharing the gospel with other people. It's that simple. You think it's not that simple, Reg. Yes, it is. But was it that simple for me to get there? No, it wasn't. It was a process. It was a reminder from my wife. Would that be pleasing to God? Of course not. 
speak that. Right? We all need reminders, amen? There's nothing wrong with that at all. But it's a process. Don't think it's going to happen to you overnight. Don't think you're not going to slip up and use a cuss word when you hit your hand, finger with a hammer. I've learned to say other words. But God knows what they mean. I can say watermelon, watermelon all day long, but God knows what I'm thinking. That hurt. Right? So don't go thinking you're not going to do that. And don't think you're going to go to hell because you did it. Just say, God, I screwed up, man. Right? It doesn't work like that. And people believe that every day. Oh, man, I screwed up. I'm going to hell. Well, we're all on a freight train then. You're headed that way, aren't we? We're not. Because of grace. Right? God shows grace in all those situations. He sent his son to earth to become like us. He knows. Now, I don't know what Jesus said when he hit his thumb with a hammer. I'd like to know, but I'm sure he had some ugly thoughts, don't you? Like, that didn't hurt. It doesn't work like that. We're all going to fall short. The Bible's real clear. We all are sinners, and we're going to fall short as long as we're here on earth. The goal is to strive to be like Jesus, right? So when we do mess up, admit it. I made a mistake. Lord, forgive me. Let's move on. Because he puts it behind him. Why can't we? Right? Move on. Transformation also comes from ourselves wanting a life change. Now, you got to remember that. That's the important part. We've got to want it. If we aren't willing to allow God full control of our lives, then transformation will never occur. If you're not willing to give it up and let God control it, then it's not going to happen. You're going to be right where you are. Good example. Judas had the best pastor. The best leader and the best advisor anyone could have. He also had the best counselor, Judas. Yet he failed. The problem may be today not, it may not be right here with our leadership, or it may not be the church you're going to. If your attitude or character doesn't change, or your heart doesn't transform, you will always remain the same. You've got to allow God control. That's the way it works. And that's what happened with Judas. Seeking God to help us in our transformation to become better, a better person and how a better life should be our daily goal. Why would we want to go through all the misery we go through? And the world offers us enough misery right now today, right? And we're all wound up in all that. Because the media wants us wound up in all that, right? So we get all wound up in it and, and we concentrate on that. Instead of what's really important to God in our life. Right? Let it go. I was the worst. I was the worst. Oh. I don't need no help from the cheering section over here. She did call me out. You bet. Anybody got any duct tape? We'll take care of that problem. You know my prayer for everyone here today. That we continue to allow God to have the reins of our lives so that we can continue to allow him to transform us into the person that he wants us to be, right? Get yourself out of the way. Move over. Get out of the way and let God step in. Let him be the one that's doing the transforming. Let him be the one that's leading in your life. You'll see so many changes. If you feel like you've done so many things wrong in your life that you've led not a good life, you made mistakes and all that, lay it at the foot of the cross. Give it to God. Let it go. Because of grace, God forgives you. Don't worry about what your family thinks. Don't worry about what your friends think. Only worry about what God thinks. And then God tells us, don't worry. Because he don't care, right? He's not going to worry about it. Why should we, right? If you know he's in full control. Love you, glad you're here today. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father God, we come to you today, Father. We lift this beautiful day to you, Father. We're thankful, Father, for the blessings, favor you just pour out on us here at your church house. Father, we're thankful that you love us enough that you show grace and mercy on us when we fall short. And Father, we do pray that you continue to transform us into the, into the likes of Jesus Christ, that we would reflect him in everything we do. 
Father, I pray that everyone here, that they will find that peace and comfort in their life by just letting go and giving you control. You know, they may be somebody here today that's struggling a little bit with something in their past or they're struggling really believing that uh, God forgives them. You know, they're tired of the way life is. If that's you today, would you pray this prayer with me? If you're ready to give all that up, it's a simple prayer of just saying your ABC. Pray in this way. You pray out loud. You pray silently. But pray this prayer. Father God, come into my heart. Father, I want a transformation. I want a change in my life. I want to grow closer to you, Father. And today, I accept you as my Lord and Savior. And I believe you sent your son to die on the cross to cover my sins and start them into my life. And starting today, I commit my life to you, growing closer to you and walking with you. Father, we love you. We praise you. We give all the glory to you. In Jesus' holy and precious name we pray. Amen. If you said that.